Hi all, I have a very instructive game to show you today by Gary Kasparov, one of the greatest players ever to play chess. And everyone knows he's a Sicilian defence exponent. Sometimes people try to play uh, offbeat variations against the Sicilian. This game was against Artyom Timofeev in the 2004 Russian Championship Superfinal. Let's have a look. E4. And Kasparov plays the Sicilian defence, knight f3, d6. So Kasparov being an, a total expert on the knight off. Uh, Archeon played bishop c4 here. So let's see how Kasparov dealt with this innovation in the opening. Knight f6, d3, knight c6, c3. So White's treating it a bit like a, a Roy Lopez plan, a slow d4 maybe later. G6, this seems like a very logical development. So both knights out and Finn chattering the bishop. White castles, bishop g7, the bishop drops back. Black castles, rook e1, and now b5. So this takes the advantage of the fact that um, the bishop is not controlling b5 now. Gaining space on the queen side might lead to structural damage later for white. This kind of thing, or even getting a pawn to a3. All these plans are now on the cards. a3. We have uh, as an alternative to a3. If d4, there may be bishop g4. It seems pretty annoying with the bishop unable to return to e2 here. So say bishop d5, queen c7. Black will be absolutely fine in this variation, at least equal. So a3. We have a5 h3 preventing that pin now knight d7 so the knight transfers to b6 this is a very very interesting plan so sometimes the knight might be able to use the c4 square if ever white did play d4 and the bishop wasn't guarding c4 so much perhaps bishop e3 a4 bishop c2 knight b6 so here it's clear now that d4 at some point knight c4 is going to be quite painful knight bd2 so just as an example here, if d4, knight c4 hits that dark square bishop and b2, and if white protects, getting that dark square bishop is really nice for black. This position, a lot of pressure on that diagonal. That bishop's getting uh, very, very dangerous. So we have knight bd2, e5 locking down against white's d4 plan. And now white gets desperate. If white doesn't do anything, Black's going to play f5, and this is looking like a really comfortable attack plan. Uh, one that I like quite a lot in my own games, just this kingside avalanche over here. White played the desperate looking b4. It gives a concrete downside target here. Uh, but uh, let's for a moment look at, uh, say, king h2, f5. What could happen, for example, like this? This would be, for example, the semi open g file is dangerous. And black can use that g6 square sometimes to contest any pressure and build up formidable looking attack. These are kind of this is a kind of disastrous scenario that white wants to avoid where there's just a big onslaught on the g file with a big advantage to black. So b4 uh, tries to distract things here. If this bishop's pinning this pawn, for example, then technically f5 is out of the question. Kasparov did take that not minding that his f5 plan has been for the moment put on hold bishop d7 we have queen c2 and now a new plan emerged here which Kasparov is taking uh, advantage of to just put pressure on that backward pawn on the semi-open file so white should be able to increase the pressure on that fixed target rook eb1 queen a8 nifty and useful here queen c1 Knight a5 vacating c6 for the queen. So a slight sliding block puzzles arrangement here where black is arranging to double the rooks, maybe to drag the knight back and putting pressure on a3. We have d4, c4, that locks out that bishop. White has a method to his madness here, very, very forcing sequence to try and uh, get back his piece activity. It starts with d takes e5. This bishop shut out of the game. If d5 leaving that bishop shut out of the game, this will be fairly uh, miserable for black with very few prospects. So this does seem like a very energetic try. D takes, 
with the idea of giving up voluntarily that dark square bishop. There's a very concrete reason here in the position, in this position, this undermining move now to try and dissolve things and get rid of that problem piece on a2. b takes, rook takes b6, queen takes, knight takes c4. So at least white hasn't got that bishop locked in in the position anymore. Queen c5, queen d1. We have queen takes c4, queen takes d7, queen takes e4. Black still has pressure though, this potential mobility of this central pawn and the dark square bishop versus the knight gives black a slight edge here. Queen takes a4. White has done well though to achieve material equality with no major problem piece. After queen d3 we have c4 protecting that pawn and technically able to get away with this without e4 being a disaster here because after e4 double attacking the knight and the rook white counters attacking the queen. We have queen e2 in this position which sets a cunning trap. So if Artyom Timothy have played here a natural looking move like rook e1 guess what black could play here this didn't happen what could black play here for 100 points black to play okay if you need five more seconds there's a really tactical move e takes is possible and after taking here taking here it's very difficult for white to hold against this past pawn so threatening to queen and here bishop c3 and black is absolutely winning. So that tempting move here rook e1 is out of the question. So knight h2 and it looks as though yeah white's done well to get this position the knight going to g4 potentially now. We have uh, bishop c3 being played and it looks as though black might be threatening in some cases bishop e1 hitting f2 but white in some cases we have knight g4 protecting f2 and the knight being uh, potentially able to bounce to e3 later. We have rook f1 being played. If c5 just to show some interesting stuff in this position perhaps strongest is h5 ruling out knight g4 with the option now of bishop e1 and it's difficult for white to parry that. The queen is uh, having to hold the rook f2 drops and black's got a huge advantage. So this would be a very, very dangerous situation after h5. Yeah, bishop e1, knight g4 is actually okay for white. So uh, after bishop c3, rook f1, we have now uh, bishop d4. And it's here that white goes severely wrong. Even at this point, at move 34, it seems the computers argue that white might have been okay, on brief analysis anyway. Uh, white played queen c6 so all is not over yet because actually white had knight g4 here now perhaps this was ruled out because surely h5 just kicks the knight back it's actually not the case in this position necessarily guess what white could play in this position and i guess both players didn't really consider this perhaps otherwise the knight would have sprung out with that uh, moment of opportunity but white has in this position c5 hitting that bishop and if hg queen takes d4 this position should be fine for white and an equal position and in fact uh, here if bishop takes c5 then check is very useful uh, with the idea of knight d7 even stronger than taking on e4 so forking and check and then winning the exchange and white would actually be better. So this was a major opportunity for knight g4 in this position but white played queen c6 instead. So now uh, black is again in the driving seat. h5 cutting that knight out of, of g4 and black is able now to intensify the pressure. pressure. Queen d3 pins that pawn virtually because if now c5 Let's put that on the board. Then bishop takes f2 would win the queen. So white's kind of stuck here and plays a desperate looking move. There is e3 potentially on the cards. So g4 was played. Desperate looking move. hg. And Kasparov plays now king g7, getting this rook into the action. An attack on the h file 
as a possibility. So very, very dangerous. And in fact, this pawn being pinned means there's also things like Queen G3 check potentially. If the rook's on the h file, then there's time to mate white without worrying about the d4 bishop. So we have King G2 unpinning that pawn, rook h8, queen d6. So white hasn't got a plan, but can black improve the position here? It's holding the knight, trying to hold down uh, all the issues. Queen h3 check, king g1, queen d3, and the king goes back. But now Kasparov finds a way of winning this position with a super duper move in this position, which ends the game. For 200 points, can you find it? Black to play here, what would you play in this position? Okay, the super powerful move is Queen C3. It actually means this battery gives that as a common square for these pieces, which means there's a double attack against the queen and the knight. With that pawn pinned on f2, there's no queen g3 in this position because then just queen takes g3 and the pawn can't take the queen. So black uh, is threatening bishop e5, to which there is no real defense at all here. The knight's kind of trapped. It had to use the opportunity earlier to get out, which required, yeah, looking at all the tactics there with the delicate c5. But this is totally hopeless. White resigned in this position. Now, this was a great example by one of the greatest Sicilian defense players ever of how to handle one of these annoying, pesky, anti Sicilian variations. There's a great course now at Chessball by Grandmaster Alex Kolovich which is on this King's Crusher TV slash anti Sicilians link. You might want to check it out. And if you were put off by those, all these anti Sicilians, I'm hoping to cover quite a few more instructive and entertaining games over the next few days on the theme of tackling anti Sicilians and using some of the model games that Grandmaster Kolovich has outlined, including this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much.